So let's talk something that we understand a little bit better. Tilting point raising 235 million to fuel expansion acquisition. So this is the, uh, the first ever equity financing. It was led by General Atlantic, uh, a leading global growth equity firm with participants from strategic investors like Red Ventures and Camara. They will use the investment to accelerate its progressive, Tilting Point will use the investment to accelerate its progressive publishing model by signing more developers in live publishing, co-developing more, more titles, acquiring more studios and partnering with developers and top IP launches. The company currently has more than 40 developer partners, meaning that these are companies that they're scaling their games through UA, they're fun by, by funding UA and managing it, uh, or doing app store optimization for them, doing app monetization, platform deployment, and more. Then they team up with the existing partners to deepen the relationship through co-development and later M&A. Tilting Point has offices in Seoul, St. Petersburg, Kiev, Barcelona, New York, San Diego, and that swanky new location in Miami. And especially like in the end of this, this article there, they talked about Tilt Moin plans to accelerate its m and strategy. All right. Well, the caveat in the beginning, really like the Tilting Point guys. Looking forward for <laughs> Samir, their, their co-CEO to join the podcast next month as we've, we've discussed. So I'm trying to, you know, as always read news objectively using Sensor Tower or any public data to analyze this. So to my view, Tilting Point has exactly the same strategy as Scopely, but they just haven't found the hit games and the hit studios yet. So what I mean by that is both of the companies are pretty much of the same age. Both are publisher publishers that have evolved to co-development, then to acquiring studios when they find the success. And this is basically them, them acquiring a co-development studio is smart approach to negating the issues of live ops being sandbagged due to the revenue sharing and so forth and so forth. It's just better to acquire the other uh, developer, continue with the live ops, and then everybody has the same goal. As of today, these both of the companies are pretty much same same age. Tilted Point has roughly is roughly of the same size as Scopely was in mid 2015. On the other hand, Scopely's revenues since then have grown 20 times. So Scopely makes 20 times more revenue per month today than it does in 2015. And Tilting Point makes the same amount of money that, that, Scop that Scopely did in 2015. And when it comes to games, guys, I just want you to guess what is the biggest Scopely game in terms of cumulative revenue? Eric Kress, make a guess. It's a Star Trek game. Star Trek. All right. Very close. So Star Trek is their second largest net revenue at $440 million. Yahtzee has till date made about 200 million in, in net revenue, but we don't know what the amount of ad revenue is. It could be much actually larger than that. Their biggest game till date is Marvel Strike Force. It's, it's past half a, half a billion in net revenues. Now, can you guess what is the biggest game from Tilting Point in cumulative revenue? Actually, match 3D. Match 3D. Okay. I, I can't even find it here. Eric Kress, do you know any Tilting Point games? Not really. That's All right. part of the problem. All right. So Tilting <laughs> Point's, uh, and this is not a knock-on. So Tilting Point's biggest game to date is Narcos Cartel War, Wars. It's sort of like a Clash of Clans version uh, with Narcos IP. Pretty fun game. It has made about 40 million according to Sensor Tower in net revenue. So significantly smaller. And Star Trek Timelines is their other top game like it's pretty much neck and neck with narcos and when you compare the uh, the star trek from tilting point that's about 40 million in lifetime net revenues and then scopely has a star trek game that is 440 million in lifetime revenue so i'm just i'm not trying to knock on tilting point here in in fact what i'm trying to do the opposite i think they have a very solid strategy i have they have great people and now they have the funding to, to go with it so they can be more aggressive and they can start closing more of these solid IPs and acquiring solid studios to execute on this these IPs. In fact, I really think that with the strategy they've chosen, they will probably have 20x their run rate in three years. I, I really do believe because I think the strategy that Scopely has employed is very smart. And I think Tilting Point has all the elements to employ the same strategy. And yeah, so I'm I'll take I'll, I'll take the I'll take the the super under on that one. But I'm trying to paint a picture that, that Tilting Point <laughs> is like Scopely was way back, but now they're they're following the same strategy, and because they've seen the the successes and and the I, failures, I hear you. Yet, but but but, but there's a different 
it was a different time back then. You could pick up these studios for peanuts, right? Relative to what you're paying for them today. And 200 million or whatever they raise, that's not a lot of money to like scale up a business in this in this day and age, you know, when valuations are all out of control, right? I don't know. Scope so it's possible. Three studios for 50 just now. Oh, but those are mice nuts, right? Those are tiny, right? So yeah, no. So we should, we'll see. I mean, they, they peaked at like 5 million a month. At, at, according to Sensor Tower, and then they're down to about three million a month. Yeah. So that run rate's pretty pretty low. And they have like they say they only have like two hundred employees, but I imagine or one hundred eighty. But I imagine most of their the people that would, would would be publishing partners. I suppose I don't know, but most of their games make two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a month. That's just really tiny, right? So we'll see what they can do. Uh, I don't know any of these guys, but I, I would be interested in talking to see what the what what the kind of the expectations are and what their plans are to find these diamonds in the rough that that haven't been picked over by every other company in well, the world well chris i want to say like the the approach that scopely has and now tilting point has I, I really like it because you build the internal genre expertise by by you know hiring the the top people in in, in certain ex extent and then when you're trying to find a studio, you're really trying to find a studio that can execute on building a game in a certain genre. Like you don't have to find a studio that can execute on running these insane live ops. Like when you consider Star Trek or Yahtzee Studio, like these studios weren't killing it before, before starting work with Scopely, but Scopely kind of leveled them up with their own expertise in live ops, with their own expertise in, in product management and platform and so forth. And the studios that they work with were good at building a game, like a game in a, in a yeah, certain but there's, genre. But there, uh, what, there's no evidence that Tilting Point has that capability that way Scopely did, does, right? Like they, have, they, have, they don't have any games that have made any money, right? Like, it's like, you know, it's, they, they, that's a long, it's, it's, a, it's a long road. It's a long road, but I think they're on the right road. So anyways, I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to, to, to get Samir again back on the podcast and discuss their strategy. Sufert, do you have any, any take on, on Tilting Point? Sufert? High level thoughts on Tilting Point are that, you know, its reputation has, has really sort of improved, I think, in the last like three years. What's funny about Tilting Point is like, it, it's gone through kind of like three iterations. It started out as like a premium label almost. Mm -hmm. They were publishing, um, Kind of paid games and just like really high quality AAA artisanal games um like leo's leo's adventure was the first kind of big hit and then they moved into like well we'll do free, free to play live services as, as a publisher and that's kind of what i imagine and then they the current iteration is like they have a big kind of and i don't i don't know maybe they're in a fourth iteration at this point but like the third iteration was like they built out like a kind of the ua uh, infrastructure and they were doing almost like agency work and then they had like kind of service levels that were priced on that base, it's like so. If you're, we're just your agency of, rec if we're just your agency, and you pay for the UA, then we charge this much. If we, if we're the agency and we pay for the a UA, then it's it's a little bit more. And then if we're the agency and we pay for UA and we help you with all this live box stuff to improve the the, the the title, then it's this much, and that's look more like official publishing deal. And then they they, they kind of follow the scope we model, having like warrants um, and basically call options on the to acquire them. And I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think it, like the way that Tilting Point kind of sits in the market now is they're kind of like a premier destination for a company that just wants to make a game, right? If they don't really have any, you know, if they don't really have any intention of like or ambition to like publish a game themselves, then Tilting Point's a really great place to land. And I don't think that was always the case. I feel like Tilting Point's in a good position. And I feel like there can only be like one or two of these companies. And maybe it's just Scopely and Tilting Point. But like those companies seem like the best position to like, fill that role of like hey you don't want to publish your own game um but you're really great at making games let us help you bring all of this like the, the meat of free to play and the meat of games as a service to your title and we'll do all the ua for you and, and we've established expertise as that and and you know we're we're now we're very well capitalized and we can scale a game to be very big as they've proven they can do so i, I feel like you know i'm happy for them smear's a good guy i've known him for and i think that they're, they're going to be pretty successful